everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia and today I wanted to do part two of my top five favorite nonfiction for the first six months of the year. So a few weeks ago, um, we went over the top five fiction reads that I had read through mid-June. I told you at that time that I was going to do a nonfiction video as well. And these are, just like with the fiction reads, these are new books that are not rereads. Books that I have read before uh, 2023 are not on this list. I'm going to do my very favorite uh, nonfiction read. I will save that till the end, but um, the other ones are in no particular order. So the first one that I'm going to tell you about is Floriography, and this is by Jessica Rue, and it is Jessica's artwork of flowers along with the Victorian meaning of those flowers. But what made it for me was her art. It was so, so beautiful. Victorians were also famous kind of for their poetry about flowers. And she interweaves some of those things in with her meanings and it was just really lovely and really, really well done. The next one is Looking for Anne. This is by Irene Gamble. And I loved the way this book was put together. It had so many photos as well as just little snippets of journal entries or um, things from her scrapbooks or little pieces of history about the island or about um, Lucy Maud herself. And it was, it was just such a, a wonderfully done book. As far as the biographies and talking about um, Lucy and how she came to find Anne and want to write about her and all of these kinds of things that was that was my favorite, looking for Anne. All right, and then the next one is How to Be a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery. So Cy is in love with animals. She just is. It doesn't matter what animal. She just has these special, special connections with this creature world. And she wrote this book about the particularly special animals that have really taught her different attributes of how we should be as humans in light of who these other creatures are. And it was so wonderful. It was so wonderful. I just, I just love just exactly what I wanted to read in January and kind of set the tone for the year. It was lovely. Next is one that I'm actually still reading, but I am just about finished with it. I don't have very much more and I know it's going to be a favorite and that is Parables of the Peanuts. And it's by Robert Short and it's illustrated by Charles Schultz. And it has been so sweet. I got done reading Knowledge of the Holy. And the reason why Knowledge of the Holy isn't on this list is because it's a reread. And so I couldn't put it on this list. Otherwise, it would be. But I got done with that and I just felt like there was a little bit of a hole in my morning routine all of a sudden, because that's when I was reading Knowledge of the Holy. 
So I pulled out parables of the peanuts and started to uh, read it thinking that it would be just something light in the mornings, you know, and it has been just so sweet to be in this place where they're talking about the way that uh, Jesus lived his life and how Charles Schultz illustrates that to mean something that is understandable and acceptable to the world. And it, it's, it's just been so good. I've enjoyed it so immensely. And then finally, I will tell you about the one that I think is probably the best and that is Words of Mercury by Patrick Lee Fermer. This is a collection of chapters from some of his books, magazine articles, newspaper articles, essays that he wrote. He has this quiet assurance in the way that he writes. It is sunshine for your day. As you are reading it, there's just this sense of, of sitting in the sunshine and just letting it warm you. Um, you automatically just feel like, like life is good when you are reading Patrick Lee Fermer's words. So Words of Mercury was my number one top five book nonfiction this year. I hope that you enjoyed this and I would love to know um, your thoughts on any of these books and I will see you in another video very soon. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to.